This module will cover pesticide use and safety. When we talk about pesticides, we should start with the pesticide label as it gives information on proper use. Most people do not read the entire pesticide label and we will try to show why doing so is important. The objectives of this lesson are as follows. Understand the different types of label pesticides. Identify the common pesticide groups. Understand how pesticides are developed and identify the common pesticide formulations. The side portion of pesticides literally means to kill. Therefore, a pesticide is something used to kill pests. However, the working definition of pesticide can also mean something that controls a pest's activity or prevents them from causing damage. For example, DEET in mosquito repellents is considered a pesticide even though it does not kill mosquitoes, but rather repels them. Pesticides are grouped based on what they control or manage. Many people think pesticide and insecticide are synonymous terms, but they aren't. Pesticide is a more general term and includes fungicides, herbicides, insecticides, miticides, as well as some lesser known groups such as bactericides. Fungicides are used to control fungus diseases, herbicides control weeds, miticides control mites, and insecticides, of course, control insects. All of these are pesticides. There are hundreds of pesticide products that are registered in each state. Only a few of those are available for homeowners to purchase. Some products may only be purchased by individuals with pesticide licenses. These individuals have gone through pesticide certification training and have passed an exam. Pesticide development is very costly and takes between 10 and 15 years of testing and reporting before a product is brought to market. The EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency, oversees this process and reviews this data for safety. Data that must be generated is extensive and specific data requirements are listed here. The process of registering a pesticide is a scientific, legal, and administrative procedure through which we examine the ingredients of the pesticide, the particular site or crop where it is to be used, the amount, frequency, and timing of its use, and storage and disposal practices. In evaluating the pesticide registration application, a wide variety of potential human health and environmental effects associated with the use of the product are assessed. The company that wants to produce the pesticide must provide data from studies that comply with testing guidelines. The company must also develop risk assessments that evaluate the potential for harm to humans as well as to wildlife, fish, plants, including endangered species and non-target organisms, as well as contamination of surface water or groundwater from leaching, runoff, and spray drift. Potential human risks range from short-term toxicity to long-term effects such as cancer and reproductive system disorders. The company must also evaluate the language that appears on each pesticide label to ensure the directions for use and safety measures are appropriate to any potential risk. Following label directions is required by law and is necessary to ensure safe use. Companies submit an application for a registration action, such as to register a new pesticide active ingredient, new product for an existing pesticide, or adding a new use to an existing product. The EPA must review each pesticide registration at least once every 15 years. The Food Quality Protection Act of 1996 established additional requirements. There are several factors that must be addressed before a tolerance can be established, including dietary exposure, aggregate exposure, common modes of toxicity, and endocrine disruption. So what is considered for re-registration? There are a number of factors, including common modes of action, multiple crop uses, multiple use sites, is the product acutely toxic or carcinogenic, are there any developmental effects or endocrine effects. This re-registration process may result in cancellation of the pesticide or some uses of the pesticide. For example, diazinon, dursban, 
and Kelthane have either been dropped completely or are no longer labeled for homeowner use. The greatest impact of re-registration is on insecticides due to the fact that humans and insects have nervous systems that may be negatively impacted by these products. Therefore, we are moving away from traditional insecticides such as organophosphates and carbamates and moving towards synthetic pyrethroids or newer green chemistries such as merit and spinosad. These are products with low mammalian toxicity and often have very low use rates. In addition to registered pesticides, there is a group of products that are plant-derived essential oil products such as those pictured here. These products do not go through the same testing and registration process. Are they safe to use? I would use cautiously as these are oils and may harm the plants. For example, a client called in to report that they used one of these products to control mealybug on their African violet. The product burned the foliage. I am often asked about organic produce and what that means. Often people assume that organic produce has not been treated with pesticides. This may not be the case as there are organic pesticides. Such products usually have active ingredients derived from a natural source and of a non-persistent nature. However, they are not necessarily safe to non-target organisms such as pollinators, predatory beetles, or parasitoids, and can be toxic to people and animals. These products go through a review process by OMRI, the Organic Materials Review Institute. Pesticides are composed of both active ingredients and inert ingredients. Active ingredients are materials that actually kill the pest. A single product may contain one active ingredient or several. Inert ingredients do not directly kill the pest but may help the product be more effective. For example, wetting agents allow the spray to coat a waxy leaf rather than beating up. Stickers make the spray less likely to wash off during a rain. A diluent is usually either water or an oil, which the active ingredient is dissolved or suspended. Acidifiers and buffers are usually added to the spray after the pesticide has been added to the spray water and is used to stabilize the pH so that it's less likely to break down. Some pesticides break down quickly under certain alkaline pHs. For example, 7 has a half-life of 4 weeks at a pH of 7, but only 1 day at a pH of 9. Captan has a pH of 3 hours at a pH of 7, but only 10 minutes at a pH of 8. A half-life is the amount of time it takes for one half of the active ingredient to break down and become ineffective. Some products are sold as ready to use and as a concentrate, which is a better value. It all depends. If you're controlling annual broadleaf weeds in a small area, then the ready to use formulation is probably adequate. It offers convenience, no measuring or mixing. You don't have to purchase a sprayer as the product container is the sprayer. But often I receive complaints from clients using this product as it will not control many perennial weeds and woody plants like poison ivy. The dose just isn't high enough to control those plants. The concentrate product would be a better value for tough to control perennial plants. The concentrate allows you to adjust the rate or dose for the weed per label instructions. The downside is they have to purchase a sprayer, measure the dose, and mix the product. Buyer beware. These products look very similar and are often confused for one another. It is easy to get in a hurry and simply look for the word prune and the brightly colored yellow container, not realizing that these products are very different in how they are used. One is used as a pre-emergent that will prevent weeds from coming up, while the other is a generic Roundup product that is non-selective and will kill almost any plant with green tissue. There are numerous formulations of products. The formulation often dictates the type of application equipment and personal protective equipment to wear to use the product safely. Some are made to be applied dry, such as dust and granules. Others are made to be applied as a spray, such as solutions, emulsifiable concentrates, and wettable powders. A few are aerosols. Different tools may be needed to apply different formulations. 
Let's talk about the basic information on the front panel of most pesticides. We'll look at the brand, trade, or product name, the common name, the formulation, and the ingredient statement. The chemical name is sometimes included, but is no longer required. Bio-advanced tree and shrub insect control is a very common insecticide used by homeowners. The manufacturer is bio-advanced. Their name for this product, the trade name, is 12-month tree and shrub insect control. The ingredient statement contains the common name of the active ingredient, in this case imidacloprid, and the percent inert ingredients which are listed as other ingredients. The chemical name for this active ingredient is not listed. Well, this completes lesson one for this module. We have four more to go. For more information on this topic, see the materials listed here.